from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Welcome to Praise the Lord. We're so glad that you joined us today right here on your TBN, the number one Christian network in the world. What a special day this is going to be. We have a great program in store for you. We have a group of some incredible anointed, radical and on fire for Jesus young people that are here with us from Valor Christian College in Columbus, Ohio. They're going to be singing, ministering to us, blessing us. You're going to absolutely love them. And our special guest today is the director of student life there at Valor Christian College, Pastor Rod Parsley's daughter, Miss Ashton Parsley. You're going to love her. You're going to love all that she's going to be talking to us about. She's going to be telling us about some of the exciting, life-changing testimonies that are taking place at Valor Christian College, as well as at World Harvest Church there in Columbus, you're not going to want to miss a single second of what this anointed woman of God is going to be sharing with you. But I do want to take a moment just to say a big thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch for giving us the opportunity to come together into your life, into your home, your hospital room, your prison cell, wherever you may be watching. The ministry of TBN literally is reaching the world every day, 24 hours a day. And I thank God for the dream and the vision that he placed in Dr. Paul Miss Jan's heart those 40 some years ago. And I want to tell you that dream, that vision is continuing to come to pass. So we honor Matt and Lori. We thank God for them. And of course, they covet your prayers. So continue to take them to the Lord every day. Now, right now, I want you to get ready to open up your heart. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Let's praise him, magnify him and glorify him. Let's do it right now.
What an incredible anointing on those young people. And again, we're so glad that they came to be with us all the way from Valor Christian College in Columbus, Ohio. Look, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of Jesus, I'm sensing him in this studio. And I believe wherever you're watching today, you're feeling the presence of God as well. So we do not want to delay time. We want to get right into our time set aside to be with our special guest today, the Director of Student Life at Valor Christian College. A dear, precious woman of God. She's a friend of mine. Y'all are going to love her. You're going to be so blessed. Let's welcome her, Miss Ashton Parsley. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you for having us on the program today. It's an honor to see you and to be with you. Every Absolutely. time we hang out, something good happens. That's right. You know? So I'm just yes. glad to spend time with you and the anointing on those young people. I'm so proud sing, of them. You should be. Yes. You should be. What What is going on with these young people? I mean, we see not just a talent, but an anointing. Yes. It's, it's tangible. You can see it. How does this come into existence? What's going on at Valor Christian College that is bringing that kind of anointing to these young people? Pastor, it's just the impartation of the Holy Spirit. You know, at, at Valor, we believe in education, application, but most importantly, impartation. Mm. We believe in taking what we teach you in the classroom and letting you apply it to real life ministry settings, just like today, yeah. the incredible opportunity to stand on this world stage and minister the gospel through song and yeah. through dance. And thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, the TBN family for having us with you today. We're just so honored and blessed. But these students, they are so hungry mm. for a move of God, Pastor. They're so zealous. Mm. They'll do just about anything you ask them to do <laughs> if they know it's going to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. So we're excited. Revival is not coming. It's happening. It's here right now. It is. Yes. And you know, there, there's a lot of pastors and youth pastors that face a lot of discouragement because in that yeah. in that generation the 18 to 35 the millennials to be honest there's a lot of them there's an apathy there's yes. not a hunger for the things of god maybe yes. they want a relationship with god and be quote unquote christian mm -hmm. but they're not out laying hands on people right. they're not moving in the gifts of the spirit yeah. but the people that are coming the students the young people that are coming to columbus ohio the cornfields of columbus right. ohio yes. they're doing so because they're hungry Mm -hmm. to be carriers of the glory. Yes. And what are some of the testimonies and things that you're seeing as these young people are catching the fire of the Spirit there at Valor? Well, the, the students that we have coming to Valor, whether on campus or online, they don't just want a message, they want manifestation. Mm. They want doctrine, they want demonstration, they want style, mm. but they want substance. Yeah, I like and that. And so they're, they're flooding in from literally all four corners of the world, 50 nations represented, 50 states represented, 
and they are indeed, as you said, catching the fire. And they want to take it outside of the walls of the church and they want to go out into the highways and the byways, as it yeah. says in Luke, yeah. and compel them to come in. And we are seeing students, they, they do it all. They do it all. They, they bring their God-given gifts and talents to valor and then iron sharpens iron. We, we teach them, we train them how to hone those gifts, use them for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to bring glory to God. So they're running camera, they're running sound, they're doing <laughs> lights, they're singing, they're dancing, they're playing instruments, they're ministering, preaching, going out onto the streets, performing outreaches. I mean, it's just absolutely in incredible what these students are willing to do in order to preach the gospel mm -hmm. to the hurting, to the hopeless, to the downtrodden. And we are seeing such amazing things happen mm -hmm. when we're going out onto the streets, doing mm -hmm. these outreaches, these missions projects. So we're just so thankful to God. And, and I've talked to you about that before. It's so mm -hmm. uh, impressive to me, for lack of better words, seeing you guys out there. Every city you guys go to on your tour, Absolutely. you're out ministering to people on the streets, yes. laying hands on them. And this is something, you know, that a lot of Christians who've been in church for more than five years or so, yeah. they lose touch mm -hmm. with that mandate, yeah. with that call. But that was the ministry of Jesus. I mean, we That's saw right. him heal a man in Mark 3 of a withered hand That's right. who was in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. But how many miracles did he do? The woman with the issue of blood out on the street. Bartimaeus, right. the blind man in Mark 10, out on the street. So you guys are not just empowering them and equipping them how to do church ministry, right. but how to take the ministry of Jesus out to the streets. Yeah. And I want you to share with our viewers today, what are just maybe two or three brief testimonies that you've seen of people responding to the gospel, getting healed, whatever it may be. I wanna hear some of these street testimonies. Yeah, well, Pastor, as you said, we're not just having church. We're not just training them to have church, to do church we're being the church mm -hmm. and we believe in doing as Jesus did. If we are Christians, if we are Christ ones, then we are to be like him. Like we him. are to reflect him. Yeah. So we are going out into the streets and we are ministering. And I can think of one example in particular um, where we are going out kind of to the same street corner uh, several times a month. Mm -hmm. And we've built almost a little following there. They, they, when they see our van <laughs> they know when y'all are coming, right? They come running because we're, we're bringing food and we're bringing supplies and we're, we're out there where the needs are and we're praying for people and we're just being a blessing and just sharing the love of Jesus, giving them free gifts, bags of candy. Be amazed, Deborah, Evangelist Deborah George, my dear friend, will yeah. say, you'll be amazed what a bag of candy in John 3.16 will do. <laughs> So we'd been going to this particular street corner in Columbus, Ohio, and in, in what's considered there the crack district, the prostitution district. And there was one prostitute in particular who every time we would come, week after week, month after month, year after year, she would always reject us, cuss us out, don't pray for me, don't touch me, I don't want to receive your ministry. And we just continued to love on her and just tell her, that's okay, God bless you, we love you anyway, we'll be back next month, we'll be back next week. And finally, after... I think it's been two years now. Just last month, we went to the corner of Miller Kelton again in Columbus, Ohio, and there she was. And this time, after ministering to her for all of these months and years, she came over to us and she said, I need Jesus. I wow. want what you have. She wow. lifted her hands. She received Jesus Christ to be her personal Lord and Savior. And that's what we're seeing on the streets everywhere we go. All, all of these cities around the world, God is just opening up doors that no man can close. And this, this is just awesome to see the ministry of Christ. Yes. The this, this street witnessing yes. taking place. This is what's going on at Valor Christian College. Mm -hmm. And I can't encourage you enough because I've been around Valor Christian alumni. I have a lot of friends that graduated from there. There's just something special that you can't get anywhere else but at Valor Christian College. And we have a little roll in that we want to show you, just give you a little glimpse as to what God is doing there. So be blessed as you watch this. Valor Christian College is not just a place to be, but a place to become. With hands-on practical application, quality education, and a spiritual impartation that can only be experienced under the anointing and leadership of Dr. Rod Parsley. At Valor, you can receive your fully accredited associate's degree in 10 different areas of study, on campus or online, from evangelism to business to music ministry, all at a fraction of the cost of other leading universities, with federal financial aid now available to qualifying students. 
Valor Christian College is an institution unlike any other, where you will be trained and equipped academically and spiritually in an atmosphere that's charged with the power and presence of God. Answer the call of Christ on your life today by becoming a part of the School of the Spirit. For more information, visit valorcollege.edu. We'll send your babies, your grandbabies, your nieces, your nephews, whoever you know that needs to be in an atmosphere like that. They have a call of God in their life. Don't hesitate. Don't delay. Get the information. I know it's been there on the screen all throughout the program. Valor Christian College needs your children, and your children need Valor Christian College as well. Of course, we're sitting here with Pastor Rod Parsley's daughter, Miss Ashton Parsley, and you are a part of an emerging generation. Yeah. And I want to just say, I know I don't have the right to be, but I'm really proud of you oh, and what God's doing you. in your life. I really am. Thank and and I'm just amazed to see how God is raising you up. And I believe God is raising people up in this day and age that he can trust. Yes. People that won't stray from the fundamental, the foundations of the word of God. And we've been talking off and on about this, you know, that there's a trend, there's a movement, it seems, yeah. to replace the old gospel with a yeah. new gospel. Yeah. But without preaching the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, the cross, the blood, the death, the resurrection, yes. we'll never see miracles. That's right. What do you sense in your spirit God is doing in the next generation? And what is it going to require for those of us that are preachers of this gospel to make sure the next generation carries the torch? Talk to us about yes. that. Well, a calling will cost you something, cost <laughs> Jesus' life. Yeah. And I think that this generation, you know, I'm a part of it, has been trained and conditioned uh, to be entitled, mm. to, to seek self-gratification. Yeah. Well, ha why would I do that if it doesn't directly benefit me? Mm -hmm. What's in it for me? That's kind of mm -hmm. the mentality. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was uh, all about what's in it for others. Right. Right. And right. so we have got to, as ministers of the gospel, help young people like myself to understand that it's about being a servant leader. Mm. That's what Jesus did. You know, my, my father, Dr. Rod Parsley says, so many of us are seeking a platform when Jesus sought a towel. He girded himself yeah. about with a towel yeah. to wash the feet of his disciples. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're called to be as followers of Jesus, disciples mm -hmm. of him, which means we are like him, we reflect him. Mm -hmm. So it's not about us, and that's the mentality of this generation. It's all about me, it's the me generation. Mm -hmm. When really in, in the gospel, you know, everything in the kingdom of God is diametrically op opposed and mutually exclusive mm -hmm. to the kingdom that we came out of. Kingdom of God is saying, it's not about you, it's about him. Right. And it's it's about taking him and his message and his love, his hope to others, mm -hmm. to a world that is hurting, that is in need of him. And you know, in, in the generation that we're talking about, that selfie, self-absorbed <laughs> exactly. kind of generation, yes. you're right, it's, it's an opposite thing when mm -hmm. you get into the gospel. Yes. But I've watched so many pastors and preachers mm -hmm. who have become so enamored with what does this do for me? Yes. What does this do to boost my following? What does right. this do to boost my popularity? Yeah. And when you fall into that trap, every message you preach, mm -hmm. every television appearance you make becomes about satisfying the public. That's right. Just like celebrities do. They have to dress a certain way, right. and act a certain way to keep their following. But when you put all of that aside and say at the end of the day, I wanna lay my head on the pillow and know that God was right. pleased with me. That's when you begin to have Holy Spirit orchestrated right. preaching and ministry. Right. And what are you doing? Because there's people who are watching, pastors that need to deal with their youth, their young people, mm -hmm. their children. And there's a lot of young people watching today as well. What do we do to break down this mindset of a self-absorbed me and yeah. get back to the basics of making this all about Jesus? Yeah. Well, I think it's just that, Pastor, as you said, get back to the basics. We overcomplicate the gospel so mm -hmm. often. The gospel is so, is so simple. Simple. And you know, something that my mother, Miss Joni Parsley, says is you don't need a name to be noteworthy. If we can wow. get away from this celebrity mentality yeah. and we can understand that the applause and the accolades of man doesn't matter mm -hmm. and start concerning ourselves with pleasing the audience of one, right. then I think we'll see that turnaround and that shift that we so desperately need in the body of Christ right now so that we can train up this next generation to be what my father called the repairers of the, the breach, breach. Yeah. the restorers of paths to dwell in. 
one, that Isaiah 58, 12 generation, reach one hand back mm -hmm. to the discarded values of the past, mm -hmm. one hand forward and bridge the gap the between gap. the two, become that so Renaissance powerful. generation. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I, I've seen this in my own ministry, in my own life. I started preaching when I was 17, yeah. after hearing your dad preach, by the way. <laughs> and, there's that youthful naivety. Sure. I want a crowd. I mean, yeah. you want to be relevant. You want, right. to, you want to reach a large group of people. Of and sure, it feels good to have that validation. But I've been pastoring long enough that when I hear people tell me, oh, that's the greatest message I've ever heard. You're the best pastor. It could be a number of days before they're out the door. Mm -hmm. So if we seek to please an ever-changing crowd that walks through a revolving door, our values will change, right. our message will change, but as I said earlier, if we can go to bed at night knowing we please the audience of one, right. and all of ministry should be fueled from compassion as Christ right. was, and I hurt for people when I see them sick, and I hurt for people whose, whose families yes. are bound, but the focus and the fuel, I guess would be a better word, of mm -hmm. what I do in praying for people is to bring honor to the suffering yes. of our Messiah. Right. One soul is a jewel in his crown. That's right. One body healed makes the stripes worth it. That's right. And I really believe what God is doing in your generation, the emerging generation, is he's recentering and refocusing on them to say, Jesus really is the center of it all. That's right. And you've got to be seeing that right now at Valor, right? Absolutely. You know, at, at Valor, and I'm so thankful to my father and to my mother and, and all of the leadership there because they're training up this generation to preach a message and not just from a pulpit. You don't need a, a pulpit to share the gospel. Right. For right. Whatever their pulpit may be, whether it's to a crack addict on the street or it's to thousands in a stadium, the, the message shouldn't seek to make people feel comfortable. Right. Or, or, or to promote compromise. The right. message should convict. Sure. We have to preach repentance again. We have to preach that, that hell is hot and heaven is real. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what this generation needs. And they really, they seek what's real. We're in a reality TV generation, mm -hmm. but they know that that's not real. They want they what's want real. The they real. want an experience. The anointing is transferable and it's tangible and mm -hmm. they want to feel that again. They want to feel alive again. And we have to show them how to become alive in Christ. Right. And we're seeing that at Valor. I mean, these students, as I said, they're so zealous. They're so hungry. They're such a pleasure to be <laughs> around because they're full of the joy of the Lord because they are doing what he called them to do. Yeah. They are out and they are ministering the uncompromising gospel and love of Jesus Christ. And one of the, the obstacles and challenges I see you guys overcoming there, our generation sometimes doesn't understand the duality of God. Right. He is a lamb, but mm -hmm. he's also a lion. Yes, sir. He's mercy, but judgment. Yes, sir. And the generation has really gotten a hold of the come as you are part of the message. Mm -hmm. But where I think sometimes we fall short is leave differently. Exactly. He accepts everybody. Everyone's welcome. But if we don't walk away from an encounter with Jesus, yes. we have done a disservice to the cross, right. to the body, to the blood. Right. And what I sense in my spirit that's coming really to the whole United States of America, it's happening around the world. You know, yeah. it. revival is taking place yes, is. in Africa, all around the world. What God is getting ready to do in America is bring back the second part of the message, right. the power, the encounter with God that changes. And God is raising up a generation. You know, I, I watch so many preachers who never mention the blood. Right. They never mention the cross. This is the catalyst of Christianity. Yes, it Without is. it, we would be nothing. Yes. And for the pastors, the ministers, and the generation of people that are emerging, would you just prophetically challenge them to be bold as lions, to forget yes. about notoriety and publicity? That comes and goes. We just have yes. a couple minutes. Would you look into that camera and just yes. prophetically encourage them to rise up? Yes. Well, you know, the, the Bible says, the word itself says, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. As pastor so eloquently put it, God is mercy, but he's also might. And we have to seek his wisdom to learn how to minister 
to every person that comes across our path, whether it's at the restaurant down the street or it's in your pulpit. Everyone is in need of something from Jesus Christ. So we need wisdom in knowing how to minister to those people. We have to go where the needs are. It's not about how many you have coming. It's about how many you have going. We must become yeah. disciples of Jesus Christ and share his love and his mercy and his compassion and his conviction. The Bible says he makes all things new. We want to become new in him. People need to become new in him, to become new creatures. Let the old things pass away and all yes. things become new. Yes. So I just encourage you today not to be concerned, as Pastor said, about notoriety. I'm going to say it one more time. You don't need a name to be noteworthy. I want my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. And I hope and I pray that that will become your creed and your calling today. Amen. And you know, as you were talking and encouraging us, every youth pastor since the age of 17 to my current age now I've been around, their generation is the worst. <laughs> They're the hardest, most, I mean, they have sex at a younger age, they do drugs, and, it, and it's true, there's a lot of truth to that. Sin obviously is an evolving disease. Mm -hmm. But I've always told people this, there could be no generation more calloused and hard-hearted than a generation that literally touched Jesus yeah. in the physical person yeah. and then turned around and said, crucify him. Mm -hmm. What was the antidote? What was the message? Christ, yeah. whom you crucified That's and hung right. on the tree. Yeah. And pastors that are watching, ministers that are watching, that is still the message. That is still the antidote for what ails humanity. Jesus Christ, him crucified, raised from the dead. Don't you worry about what's popular. Power will never become unpopular. Mm -hmm. And truth will never be out of style or out of date. I don't care what they tell you. Mm -hmm. Power is never going to be irrelevant. Yes. And as Miss Ashton said to us, it's what this generation and really what our nation is looking for a real powerful encounter with a living God so I encourage you again if you have children grandchildren nieces nephews that you know God's marked he has a call in their life get them into Valor Christian College they're gonna learn how to do things like run cameras sing play and <laughs> edit and do technical stuff, but most importantly, they're going to walk out of there with a tangible anointing on their life, an anointing that is already touching and reaching the world. So we encourage you to get that information. And Ms. Ashton, again, thank you so much thank for being you, here Pastor. with us. It's a thank pleasure to sit down and talk with you, and I am proud of you and looking thank forward you. to how God is just going to continue to use you. Amen. We know that you've been blessed today. I know that. God has spoken to you. He's touched your heart. He's encouraged you. And in our last minute together, I want to ask you to continue to pray for Matt and Lori, the entire TBN staff, the entire TBN family. The weight of carrying a worldwide ministry is a great and heavy weight. We've been talking about the price and the cost of ministry and the calling. Matt and Lori have and continue to pay a great price for the responsibility God has given them to be a trumpet and a voice to the world. So they need you to cover them, to undergird them in prayer, their children, the staff here, the entire TBN family, we need your prayers. And of course, we need your financial support as well. Nothing is free. Jesus gave us the gospel, but the cost of spreading it is the cost of your seed. So I encourage you to continue to support TBN with your finances. And together, we will continue to reach this gospel or the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love you and we thank God for you. We're praying for you. You continue to pray for us. And until we see you again, you just keep your hopes up, keep your head up, keep faith alive in your spirit. God is a good God, a miracle working God. And I can't wait to see you next time right here on Praise the Lord. And remember as we go today, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God bless you. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.